how like in Ukraine, I think it's 25% of the world's wheat is produced there in Ukraine. And I, I could have, maybe I'm wrong, but you guys can fact check me in the comments. It was like 75% of the fertilizer that's used in farming globally comes from that Russia, Ukraine area where the war is happening. And so if that stuff's not being taken out of the ground and produced and shipped off globally, you're not going to see the effects of that six, 12 months or more down the road. So what does that do to the global food supply? Well, if you look at the Arab Spring, when all that started, it, it was the you saw a small appreciation that like the price of wheat back then. And so when 25 percent of the production you know, goes offline, I don't know all of it or most of it or a lot of it goes offline. But you're not going to see everything we got mostly is stored at this point. It's already in the process of production. So your new supply stops. It stops feeding the pipeline. So what happens to Africa? What happens to the West when the bread, one of the bread baskets of the world, 25% of its capacity gets, gets stopped. So what are the, what's the net effect of that? And then the fact that fuel is going through the roof, everything's becoming more expensive. All the new money has been created. What happens? We won't know for two, three, four years what the it's like the wave has been created and the wave pool, but it hasn't reached the beach yet. And so the tsunami hasn't reached yet. We're just sitting back and thinking everything's fine. Cause that's what happened. It was three, four years, 2007, 2008. And man, when that hit, it's like, phew. yeah, as a it business was owner, it was fast. It's slowly going bad and then just really, we have been so challenged in the past couple of years having products to be able to sell. Um, this has never happened to us before. You couldn't get tubes to put products in. You couldn't get boxes to ship products in. You couldn't get carriers to ship products because they didn't have enough workers. They still don't have enough workers because people got unmotivated, demotivated to work, but they were paid to stay home. They were paid more to stay home than they were making for their eight or 10 bucks an hour. It, it, the government basically paid, it was about, what, five, 600 a week, I think it was. And if somebody's making eight or 10 bucks an hour, it's like, hey, I'll, I'll take the unemployment all day long and I can sit at home and read a book, I could paint, maybe do some repairs around the house and make a full-time wage for doing nothing. Why go back to the, you know, working in the kitchen at that restaurant, washing dishes for eight or 10 bucks an hour, yeah. when I can make 15 an hour sitting on my ass. All the carriers are understaffed you know ups fedex usps the truckers are looking at it saying you know it cost me too much it's it'd be a probably a good time to park this thing and take some time off um, it cost me too much to work uh, i see our supply chain just being so impacted by the things that have happened in the past couple of years and i've had to raise my prices i haven't raised my prices in 11 years until this year had to we got a container, a new product from Dominican Republic. Man, did it cost so much more. You know, it went up about 25%. Uh, we use offsite storage. That cost went up 25% for my storage. You know, it's crazy what has happened in the past year. Now, we're doing well. We're solid. We're working our butts off. We work a little harder. We make it happen. But this is hap this is not unique to my company. This is United States, coast to coast. What do you think about that, Jen? I, I do agree that people are working harder. My daughter works for a boutique and during lockdown, doors were closed. It was kind of a panic moment. What are we supposed to do now? But what they did was they improvised. They would deliver closed deliveries to their clients. They took the time to set up uh, online store and build their website and they worked a little bit harder and they built their business up a little bit more so that when lockdowns were over they hit the ground running they did t there was a deficit for sure but you have to you kind of have to go with the flow you got to you got to work fast on your feet you and adapt. Yeah. yeah adaptation is the name of the game and if you can't adapt really fast you're just gonna lose out you know 
So I guess it took a lot of creative thinking, but they were able to pull it off. And now their numbers are 25 to 30% higher because they implemented those changes. So it did put a, 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 a strain on their, them. They're just glad they didn't shut down and lose their business like so many people did. That's my only personal, you know, thing that I, I witnessed. Um, everybody is hurting for starting and it's not my first rodeo. I mean, I'm in my fifties. I've seen the country go to shit a few times, but, um, expansion and the contraction yeah. of money supply. It's, that's what it basically boils down to. Yeah. I'm not panicking yet. Cause I've seen this, like the housing crash, 2007, eight, nine, 10 era. I saw so many lives destroyed from that, uh, suicides, multiple suicides, drug overdose, tons of divorces, Half of my friends lost their homes. It was devastating. It wasn't just, um, oh man, we lost our house. It was families torn apart, depression, um, financial drug abuse, stress is suicide. the number one reason for a divorce. I saw, I know mm. off the top of my head, three suicides from that era. My next door neighbor fell off the wagon, went back to his drug use. He was dead in two weeks. Um, every single house on my street got a divorce except for two houses. Like it was it put strain on our families. People were losing their jobs. People were arguing. Uh, it was a disaster mm. and, uh, it impacted me for sure. So after going through that, I know that whatever's happening now is insane and it doesn't make sense. And that's exactly where we were in 2007, eight, nine, 10 going, what's happening. This doesn't make sense. I feel like we're there again. It's like a cyclical thing. It just hit again. I'm not going to panic this time. Like I did last time. I'm just kind of trying to go with the flow and hold on, hold on real tight. And I, I it's sad because it's like you're, you're holding on tight, but you're seeing people fall off left and right. You know, I don't think that it's a hundred percent on leadership. I think it's on people. A uh, republic, if you can keep it. Yeah, it's got. It, I mean, it's, it takes a village. It's you can't just point fingers. You got to put your boots on the ground and go out there and, and make. You figure can't out point how to, your fingers at the dementia patient. In the it's White one House. guy. It's one dude. You can't just say that dude is responsible for everything that happens is in this country. We're responsible. You or yourself told us that we're all equals to our government leaders. Well, what are we doing? What are you doing? What are we all doing? Who are we voting for? We're the one that put. We're the ones that put them there. If you don't like it, vote different. Shit, we got hmm. another election coming in two years. We need an up-close focus on that. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it looks like he's pointing at a gas pump, but it might just be subliminal because I like seen it so many do? times. <laughs> Is that what you do? Do you stick them on uh, – or do people stick those on gas people, pumps? People – I would never do that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, though. <laughs> oh, I did that. I'm sure Chunky and Post can zoom in on that, right? Yeah, yeah but okay, you way. know, before, yeah. If you've seen these at your local gas pump at the price when your eyeballs are bugging out, just remember Joe Biden, he did that. And you can buy these on Amazon. Just look for When you I say Joe that. Biden did that, his policies caused it. Gas is high in other countries, not just the US, but he, he's responsible for the gas going up it's in every country. And demand. His policies restricted the supply of gasoline. I thought that Donald Trump gas. had that um thing that he did with those it was a dollar eighty seven or dollar. Was it Trump. April of last year or dollar eighty seven. He had yeah. but then that it lapsed. When does it lapse? Like now? Dollar eighty seven. Right now, you know do you think that our current prices were Just denying reality? We're at like I think I paid four sixty nine on she my way here the, to get here today. She hates that Joe Biden caused this. She's pissed off. Here's my question: Do you think we're even beginning Jen, to feel stickers. the Ukraine Russian conflict in our gas prices? No, because we're still buying from them. We're well, still. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it's like it's like uh, Russia is like the scapegoat now. We're we're gonna blame it on on Putin. And, oh, well, Putin's invading Ukraine. That's why our gas is so high. This is uh, fallout from policy well, changes. Well, in all fairness, it's not helping the price because that's further restrict. Well, actually, not really restricting the supply because everybody in Europe needs his gas. So what, that's what we were talking about last night is that everybody in Europe is still buying gas and sending them the cash, even though they're imposing all these economic uh, restrictions on them. But because they need fuel, they, they're giving them the money. 
Yeah, I don't know how it works with gasoline. Uh, I know that when I buy products. I... And India, one of our allies, just bought Russian fuel at a discount. Yeah. Money cuts a lot of ties. And Indians are like, hey, 30% discount. I was like, we'll buy from you. But don't you have to like, how does it work? Don't you have to buy the oil and then somehow turn it into gasoline and then, you know, take it from wherever you turn it into gasoline and get it somehow distributed among the well, whole country? Well, there's different grades of oil and, you know, they, they don't just use it for um, gasoline. They make lubricants out of it. They make plastics. They make different pharmaceuticals out of the different ingredients. So they run it through refineries and they break it out into its individual components and make all these, all kinds of other It's even products. in uh, makeup, beauty supplies. Even. It's in everything yeah. basically. Yeah. I, I just don't understand how our very recent changes in gas policies and where we're getting it from are impacting our country so quickly. That's, you know, it was up. It was already going up, 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 It's up. been going on for the last year. I mean, just the stuff with the lockdowns. I mean, you have global supply chain issue. Even truckers at truck gas or people taking it out of the ground. I mean, every industry has been affected by the lockdowns. And, and everything's more expensive. Because it, when you have the people that were making 8 or 10 bucks an hour, making five, 600 bucks a week to, to sit at home, it's like, if it was me... If if I was making eight or ten dollars an hour and the government's like, yeah, well, your company got shut down and you're furloughed or whatever, hey, here's five or six hundred bucks a week in unemployment until things get back to normal. And then you could continue staying on that. I was like, what would you do? If you maybe you worked your dick in the ground for 20 years and you're in your 40s or whatever, and you know, you've never had any time to yourself and you get paid to just sit at home you can read books you can spend time with your children you can contemplate your life mm -hmm. maybe you can do those repair projects around your house take your wife to a nice bed and breakfast or whatever or just have a nice dinner or steak dinner or grill out have some friends over that's a lot more fun than going and making eight ten bucks an hour i mean the yeah. amount of money they were getting paid in a lot of cases they're they're the government's paying them double what they were making to do nothing uh, who would in their right mind who struggled their whole lives take advantage of that? It sure is tempting. I mean, we work hard and but, then we have to give half of that back anyway. So it's our not? money. So, I mean, the point being is the consequences of paying these people that are making eight or 10 bucks an hour to sit at home and do nothing and not go back to work, which again, if it was me, hey, money cuts a lot of ties. It's <laughs> like nothing personal. It's just business. I'd take that deal. Can you imagine 40, 50? 50 years old and you know you've always worked you know minimum wage jobs your whole life because you believe that that's all you're really capable of and now you're making double that it's like man you, you're gonna want that to go on as long as possible you can get caught up on things you can get caught up on bills you need to buy yourself some new clothes or whatever it happens to be do a little shopping on amazon but if you're a restaurant and you need somebody to wash the dishes and you're paying people 10 bucks an hour and nobody wants to come in and do that because the government pays them more to sit at home well, now you're paying your dishwashers 15, 18 bucks an hour, whatever it happens to be, to get them to come in. And so now you got to charge your customers more because your expenses are gone. You got to pass it on to them. The, every single thing, book, I mean, uh, books, the cost of making books is going up. These mugs, everything, everything I buy, everything we all buy is more expensive because the labor cost has been driven up by the government's policies. The Democrats got their 15 bucks an hour, basically, by making everything more expensive. But if people are now making more money per hour and the cost of everything is more expensive, did they really get a raise? Are they really getting ahead? How do you feel about minimum wage? There should be no minimum wage. Ah, I love you. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> supply and demand. You have to... Pay people based on what the market will bear. I completely agree. Meaning, you know, if you want to earn more than what the current minimum wage is in my business, if you make yourself more valuable than yeah. that, and then threaten you get to paid leave. based on the value that you bring to the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, if I have to pay someone this much to have them there and they just want to punch the time clock. 
or I can have someone that loves being there and is actually benefiting me more than that. I'm going to pay them more.